Hello students, I am Soumya Sahu, lecturer in Civil Engineering at SKDAB Common Polytechnic Raudkela. And this video lecture is prepared for the third semester Diploma Civil Engineering student. In today's lecture video, we shall discuss about cement. Cement is a very fine, soft and powdery type of substance and it is made from a mixture of elements that are found in natural materials. And what are those materials? These are limestone, clay, sand or shell. So when cement is mixed with water, it can bind sand and aggregates together into a hard and solid mass known as concrete. So cement is a binding material. Okay. In the year 1824, Joseph Austin, a British stone mason, he heated a mixture of finely ground limestone and clay in his kitchen stove and uh, ground the mixture into a powder to create a hydraulic cement. What are the chemical composition of cement? C. Cement comprises of Lime about 60 to 67 percent, silica about 17 to 25 percent, alumina about 5 to 8 percent, iron oxide about 0.5 to 6 percent, magnesia between 0.1 to 4 percent, alkalis 0.2 to 1 percent, and lastly, sulfur trioxide in the range of 1 to 3 percent. So let's see the functions of ingredients of cement. Lime is the major ingredient of cement and excess quantity of lime makes the cement unsound. Unsound means the cement will expand. If lime is less, it decreases the strength and it allows the cement to set quickly. Next component is silica. So it is an important ingredient which gives strength to cement. So it impacts strength to cement. And if it is present in excess, silica allows the cement to set slowly. Let's see the function of alumina. Alumina imparts quick setting time to the cement. So the cement sets quickly because of alumina. And if it is present in excess quantity, it weakens the cement and it also lowers the temperature of clinker. So what is clinker? Cement clinker is a solid material produced in the manufacture of Portland cement as an intermediary product. Then next, let's see the function of iron oxide. Iron oxide helps the fusion of raw materials during the burning stage. We will come into uh, this in detail when we will study about the manufacturing process of cement. And it gives the color, strength and hardness to cement. Then magnesium oxide. If magnesium oxide is present in small quantity, it imparts hardness and color to cement. But if it is present in excess quantity, then it weakens the cement. Sulfur trioxide, a very small quantity of sulfur trioxide is required in the manufacturing process but in excess it can make the cement unsound. That means the cement will expand. A small quantity of alkali is appreciated as an ingredient of cement but alkalis and other impurities present in the raw materials are carried by the flue gases during the heating and if it is present in excess then efflorescence is caused. Then let's discuss about the field testing of cement. So what if uh, you do not have any apparatus with you and you are given a bag of cement and you are asked to test whether that cement is good or not. Okay so how will you judge whether the cement is good or not? So simply 
you can try some of the tests like you can open the bag and take a look at the cement and uh, there should not be any visible lumps the color of the cement should normally be greenish gray so first thing is there should not be any lumps and the color should be greenish gray and uh, secondly if you thrust your hand into the cement bag it must give you a cool feel it should feel cool and it should not feel warm the next if you take a pinch of cement and feel between your fingers it should give a smooth feeling and you should not feel a gritty feeling okay so if the cement is taken and it is rubbed between your fingers then it should uh, feel smooth if it is felt rough it indicates adulteration with sand then if you take a handful of cement and throw it into a bucket full of water then the particles should float for some time before this then let's come to the physical properties of cement there are certain tests conducted on cement like fineness test consistency test setting time test soundness uh, test and uh, the strength test fineness test is carried out to check the proper grinding of cement and uh, the fineness or the particle size of the cement it affects the hydration rate and thus the rate of strength gain the smaller the particle size the greater will be the surface area to volume ratio and thus more area will be available for water cement interaction per unit volume while the coarser particles may not completely get hydrated so this causes low strength and low durability so for a rapid development of strength high fineness is required so let's watch a video to know how fineness test of cement is conducted this video explains about the determination of fineness of cement now the cement of approximate weight is taken in a and that the lumps in the cement is been removed now the cement a container is placed in the weighing melons and it is tab and it should be zero now the cement is placed in the container the cement of weight 100 grams to be taken which is noted as w1 of 100 grams this is is sieve of 90 micron sieve and a pan now this sieve is cleaned and placed on top of the pan now the weighted cement is poured into the sieve setup see setup is close now the sieve setup is placed in the sieve shaker this sieve shaker now we have to set 15 minutes of sieving now the sieve setup is placed in the sieve shaker and tightened it's locked and the machine is started 
for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, the machine automatically off. Now the screw lead is removed. And the sieve setup is taken out from the sieve shaker. Placed in the weighing balance and teared. So this is residue. Then the residue is taken and it is weighted. And this weight should not be more than 10% of the original weight. The next test is normal consistency of cement. So normal consistency is defined as the percentage of water required to produce a cement paste of standard consistency. So the main purpose of the test is to determine the percentage of water required for the preparation of cement paste. Let's watch a video. Standard consistency test of cement. Standard consistency test is a test conducted to estimate the quantity of water required to make a cement paste of normal consistency. Normal consistency is defined as the percentage of water required to form cement paste whose viscosity should be such that the Vicat's plunger penetrates up to a 5 to 7 mm from the bottom of the Vicat's mold. The diameter of a Vicat's plunger is 10 mm and length is 50 mm. The apparatus used is called Vicat's apparatus. Let us now see how to perform this test. First, take about 500 grams of cement and add a quantity of water of 24% by weight of cement. Prepare the cement paste in a standard manner and fill it into the Vicat mold. Once a mold is filled completely, smooth and levels the surface of the cement. The standard plunger is now attached to the apparatus. The plunger is released quickly. Take the reading and find out the depth of penetration of plunger from the bottom. Similarly, conduct continuous trials with a higher percentage of water until the plunger penetrates up to a 5 to 7 mm from the bottom. The current percentage of water is the required percentage of water to produce a cement paste of standard consistency. Note that this test should be conducted at a constant temperature of 27 degrees plus 2 degrees Celsius and constant humidity of 90 percentage. Subscribe our channel for more civil engineering related videos. So this is how standard consistency or normal consistency test of cement is conducted and uh, this is the Vicat apparatus which is a uh, used to conduct the standard consistency test look this uh, Vicat apparatus comes with three kinds of uh, attachments one is a plunger which has been shown in the video and uh, a square needle and a needle with an annular cooler so this is the mold Vicat's mold here you can see the square needle which is fixed over here the next uh, test is uh, initial setting time of cement the normal consistency of uh, portland cement is uh, about 30 percent so after you know how much of water is to be added to the cement to prepare a cement paste so you can take that much amount of water to prepare the cement mortar and uh, we can conduct the initial setting time test of cement. This test is used to detect the deterioration of cement due to storage. It is a conventional type of test and uh, it has got no relationship with the setting or hardening of uh, actual concrete.
and for ordinary portland uh, cement the initial setting time should be 30 minutes and the final setting time should be 10 hours initial setting time is the time interval between the addition of water to the cement to the stage when the needle completely ceases to penetrate so let's watch next video regarding the initial setting time and final setting time setting time test of cement Generally, a logical division has been made for the setting time of cement as initial setting time and final setting time. The initial setting time is regarded as the time elapsed between the moment that the water is added to the cement, to the time that the paste starts losing its plasticity. The final setting time is the time elapsed between the moment the water is added to the cement, and the time when the paste has completely lost its plasticity. The Vicat apparatus used in the consistency test is used for setting time test also. Take 500 gram of cement sample and gauge it with 0.85 times the water required to produce cement paste of standard consistency. Start the stopwatch at the moment water is added to the cement. The paste is prepared in the standard manner and filled into the Vicat mold within 3 to 5 minutes. Initial setting time. Attach the needle to the apparatus gently and bring it in contact with the surface of the test block and quickly release. Allow it to penetrate into the test block. At the beginning, the needle will completely pierce through the test block. Repeat the test for every 2 minutes until it fails to pierce the block beyond 5.0 plus or minus 0.5 mm measured from the bottom of the mold. The time period elapsed between the time when water is added to the cement and the time at which the needle penetrates the test block to a depth equal to 5.0 plus or minus 0.5 mm from the top is taken as initial setting time. Final setting time. Replace the needle of the Vicat apparatus by a circular attachment. This needle has two portions, one is a central needle and other is a circular cutting edge of the attachments. Upon lowering the circular attachment repeatedly for an equal interval of time. At some particular point, the central needle makes an impression makes the impression while circular cutting edge fails. The time period elapsed between the time when water is added to the cement and the time at which the circular attachment fails to make an impression is taken as final setting time. The results of initial and final setting time should be reported to nearest 5 minutes. The temperature of our laboratory, at the time of gauging, should be within 27 degrees Celsius plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius and the relative humidity is 65 plus or minus 5%. Subscribe our channel for more civil engineering related videos. The next test conducted for cement is the soundness test. The purpose of this test is to detect the presence of uncombined lime in cement. And for this uh, test, Leach Atelier's apparatus is used. Here you can see the Leach Atelier's apparatus. Let's watch a video to have a clear idea about the test.
Now you have to cover the mold with another piece of glass sheet. Now the whole setup is submerged in water at a temperature of 27 plus minus 20 degrees Celsius and the length is measured. Now the entire setup is submerged in a water bath. Then it is cooled down to room temperature and the distance between those two bars is again measured. Soundness or expansion of cement is the difference between these two lengths. So this must not exceed 10 mm for uh, ordinary rapid hardening and low heat Portland cement. Compressive strength of cement can also be found out by preparing a cement uh, mortar of uh, cement and sand in 1 is to 3 proportion and the compressive strength uh, of the cement mortar at the end of 3 days should not be less than 11.5 Newton per mm square. So let's discuss about the manufacturing of Portland cement. So there are two types of uh, methods by which cements are produced. One is uh, dry process, another one is wet process. And uh, the dry process involves the mixing of raw material, burning, grinding, and uh, packing and distribution. Let's watch a video regarding the manufacturing process of cement. Limestone and clay occur together in our quarries at Cape Foul Wind. The quarry trucks deliver the raw materials to the crusher where the rock is crushed to smaller than 100 millimeter, 4 inches. The raw materials are then stored ready for use. Stockpiles near the kiln where pre-blending takes place. About 80% limestone and 20% clay are ground in ball mills with water, producing very fine, thin, paste called solari. The chemical composition of the solari is very carefully controlled by adjusting the relative amount of limestone and clay being used. The solari is stored in large besants ready for use. The solari is fed into the upper end of a rotary kiln, while at the lower end of the kiln, a very intense flame is maintained by blowing in fennelly ground coal. The solari slowly moves down the kiln and is dried and heated until it reaches a temperature of almost 1500 degrees Celsius, producing clinker. This temperature completely changes the limestone and clay to produce new minerals, which have the property of reacting with water to form a cementaceous binder. The hot clinker is used to preheat the air for burning the coal and the collate clinker is stored ready for use. The clinker is finally ground with about 5% gypsum in another ball mill, producing cement. The gypsum regulates the early setting characteristic of cement. The finished cement is stored in silos, then carted to our wharf or packing plant facilities. So the calcareous material like uh, limestone are crushed and uh, fine grinding is done in the ball mills uh, and then it is taken to the storage basin. Similarly, uh, the argillaceous material like clay are crushed and it is uh, grinded for finely in the ball mills. And uh, both of these material are mixed in a correct proportion and uh, it is heated at uh, 800 degrees Celsius. Then it is taken to the storage tank, then fed to the rotary clean and after that clinkers are formed and uh, about 2 to 3 percent of gypsum is added and these clinkers are ground in the ball mills again and after that cement is formed and steam cement is uh, taken to the packing plant this is how the cement is produced by dry process whereas in weight process the proportion of limestone and clay is taken to make a slurry 
and blending of slurry to correct composition is done and after that that slurry is uh, stored and uh, it is fed to a rotary clean and then the slurry is converted into clinker and clinker is then ground in ball meal uh, with the addition of 2 to 3 percent of gypsum and cement is formed and then it is taken to the packing plant there are different types of cements ordinary portland cement rapid hardening cement sulfate resistant cement quick setting cement low heat cement portland pozzolana cement high alumina cement, white cement and colored cement. Ordinary Portland cement is a very common variety of cement and it is suitable for the construction of civil engineering works except the underwater constructions. And uh, this is used in all important structure where uh, great strength is required such as heavy building and bridges, foundations in wet places and structures subjected to the action of uh, water such as uh, retaining wall and uh, watertight floors. Cement motor for plastering and pointing purposes for preparation of plain concrete. The next is quick setting cement. As the name indicates, it sets very fast. The early setting property is uh, brought out by reducing the amount of gypsum during the grinding process. And uh, the cement is costlier than the ordinary Portland cement. The initial setting time is uh, 5 minutes. The final setting time is 30 minutes. And it is ground finer than OPC. The advantage of uh, quick setting cement is uh, it is used in construction of structures of underwater in waterlogged areas and it is also used in emergency circumstances where quick setting of cement is needed. White cement raw material like china clay and pure limestone are used to get pure white color and it is a variety of OPC ordinary Portland cement. It is prepared from such materials which are practically free from colouring oxides of iron and manganese. For burning of this cement, the oil foil is used instead of coal. It is used for floor finish, plaster work and ornamental work. It is also used to fill the small holes during sanitary and water supply fittings. Blended cement uh, means the cement mixture containing ordinary Portland cement and at least one supplementary cementitious material or pozzolana is known as blended cement. Nowadays fly ash is added or blast furnace slag is added to cement. Fly ash uh, is a particular material which is collected by the electrostatic precipitators uh, which are uh, fitted in the thermal power plant. So these cementitious materials are uh, added to the OPC to get a blended cement. Blended cements blended at uh, cement plants and are generally more uniform and produce better results than the blended concrete mixture combined at the concrete mixture. So blended cement enhances the strength, it improves uh, the long term strength and it reduces the amount of water required. Blends produce stronger concrete. Blended cement is resistant to sulphate attack. So these are the probable questions that you may get. For two marks, it is a like state five types of cement. State the initial setting time of uh, cement. If in your examination it is written simply cement then you have to mention the initial setting time of ordinary portland cement or opc what are the two methods of manufacturing cement for long question answer type uh, you may get such questions like explain the manufacturing process of cement by dry process explain any three types of cement for reference purposes uh, you can refer rangwala engineering materials book so thank you students if you have got any doubts you can ask me